MPBN Sports presents the State AA Football Championship. From Severance Field on the campus of Colby College in Waterville, the Tigers of Biddeford take on the Bangor Rams. Now for all the exciting action, here are Dewey DeWitt and Joe Gould. This is Joe Gould here at Colby College, Waterville, Maine, as we get set for the Class AA State Championship between undefeated Biddeford 9-0 and, and the Bangor Rams who are 8-1. These schools met in 1967 at Whittier Field, Bowdoin College in Brunswick, Maine, and Biddeford came out a victor by a score of 20 to nothing. In 13 years since 1967, the North has won this division title 11 out of the 13 times. And the two times, it's been Biddeford who's won on their side, 1967 and 1971. And their only loss by Biddeford was to Brewer in 1970 by a score of 48 to 20. Bangor has won the title in 1973, 75, 79, all against South Portland. Last year beating South Portland by a score of 42 to 8. And no team has ever won this back to back. Bangor is kicking from our left to right. And we'll run down the offensive, the defensive alignment now for the Bangor Rams when they set up. At right end will be Lance Delano. The right tackle will be Brian Boffinger. The nose guard will be Chip Hall. Left tackle, Pete Duran. Left end will be Mark Thompson, Pat Dugan, the right linebacker. And we're going to get ready for action, and we'll pick up the rest. But here right now is Dewey DeWitt. Philippon kicks off. This kick scribbled off the left, where it's taken by an up back up along the right side and slips and falls on a gorgeous sun-drenched field. And Bitterford will put the ball in play at the 33-yard line. And making the stop that time, Dewey, was Kevin Ward for the Bangor Rams. So as the offense sets up now for the Biddeford Tigers will be LaFountain, Fournia, Gornia, Gervais, Hickey, Small, and Gadbois. In the backfield will be the quarterback, Keith Coteau, Jalinas, Montembleau, and LeClaire. Now they shift out of their uh, formation, and the pitch out goes to their LeClaire. LeClaire on a good uh, tackle by Whitney as he crossed the 40-yard line, up close to the 40-yard, up to 39. Joe, uh, there is a quartering wind. Well, it's almost uh, wreck left to right, so Bangor will be uh, had uh, chosen the defend the goal on the left as Biddeford chose to uh, receive the kick. So Biddeford's working against the wind here in the first quarter. Now they go into their wishbone uh, lineup. Biddeford Tigers undefeated. The handoff this time goes again to Leclerc, and Leclerc breaks off left tackle. Joe, uh, that time, wishbone goes to the left. That time coming up was Doug Whitney again, so in two plays, Whitney has made two tackles. And from that wishbone, uh, the big fullback, who is Leclerc, will do most of the carrying. It's very deceptive. They are a quick, good football team. They have got here with no losses. Bangor uh, on the season started out very, very slow, as they usually do, but came on with a big bang at the end of it. And the Biddeford team has averaged 30 points a game as compared to Bangor's 19, and Biddeford has given up only 7.4 points per game against Bangor's 8.8. .8. So we're trying for a first down as Croteau, Croteau, the quarterback, says we've just got two or three inches, let's go for it. So it appears in this early going that they may go for it. Well, it's third down. Obviously, they uh, one more crack, and if they don't make it, uh, the two or three inches. But Bitterford with their excellent, excellent uh, fullback, uh, Leclerc, who carries on an average of about 40 times a ball game. And, of course, with uh, the option there for Croteau to either run or uh, pass off, hand off on that wishbone. So they line up now, and the quarterback sneak in is Croteau, and he will have picked up the first down up close to the 40-yard line. And getting over the top is number 60, Pat Dugan, for the Bangor Rams, but they do get their first down, the first initial series for Biddeford. So uh, as the clock ticks down here, Drew, we're going to have to, uh, we're not going to have an exercise of seeing the clock in futility now. We're going to have to find out what's going on by reading it ourselves. Looks like a head adjustment, uh, helmet adjustment in there for number 51, who is Gene Gervais. The ball is spotted at the 44-yard line, and as we said, this sun-drenched field with the yardage markers plainly uh, marking on a beautiful afternoon for football. Again, the wishbone offense with uh, both ends in tight. 
forfeit or could Bangor jump a little it may have been an offside the flag is thrown and it may have been encroachment we'll see whether they were drawn off well going uh, for Bangor the nose guard number 60 looked like uh, Pat Dugan may have jumped a little bit and uh, now well it was uh, it was it now they've changed their minds and first of all they marked it against Bitterford as a uh, uh, legal motion and now they determined Bangor is offside little official mistake there at the moment Joe and the officials we might as well get them in as Charlie Roberts Oscar Cludio Pennell Wooded Bruce Campbell and Tim Furrow this time they split uh, the ha halfbacks out wide and uh, the pitch out goes out right to uh, bad boy Gad boy on the end around goes off the right side down up over midfield and down to about the 43 yard line as Bitterford suddenly changed it from that wishbone into a, a wide offense uh, go. And quickly getting over there to make the tackle was Ralph Kamick, who is a junior, so he'll be back another year for the Bangor Rams. But an excellent run that time by Gedboy, who got out to the right with a lot of blocking and picked up some good yardage. Bitterford's uh, showing a rather diversified offense. We thought they ran mostly out of the wishbone, in which they're lined up now, but they'll split off the wishbone. Now both ends are in tight. First down. The handoff this time goes to LeClaire. LeClaire breaks off left tackle for about five. And Bitterford's uh, making big gains early in the ball game, Joe. And Skip Hall for the Bangor Rams got his uh, arm in there to knock uh, the uh, exploits of LeClaire down somewhat. LeClaire has some enormous holes as he's moving up from that uh, position from the wishbow. And he's the first man, and he's down low, and he's very deceptive when he gets the ball. Bitterford are alternating the halfbacks, Monumbo and Gadboy, in uh, bringing the plays in. This time, the handoff again goes to LeClaire, and he's met by the Bangor Rams line, the right side of the line, led by Skip Hall, stopped uh, LeClaire right in his tracks. And Brian Boffinger was in there for an initial hit, too, so... Some good hitting on both sides, good blocking uh, for the Bitterford team, and some good hits by the Bangor team. Big down here, Joe, third and six. Bitterford operating against the wind, and we were watching them before the game on uh, field goal kicking, and they'd have to be almost inside the 20 to kick against the wind. And yeah. there's nine minutes left in this quarter. Again, they split out from the wishbone with uh, LeClaire, the only man behind the quarterback, to hand off. No, the, the keeper this time by the quarterback, Rattoli, fumbles, and... <laughs> It looked like Bangor recovered. It looked like Whitney if they got it. The ball was in the air, and it looked like Whitney may have gotten it as they unravel down there now. It appears that Bangor, and I believe it was number nine, 18. Check that. Number 18 is Kevin Stevenson for the Bangor Rams. So he comes over the sideline with arms up. So there's the first turnover in the ball game. Well, Bitterford had a good march going, although it would have been awfully close to a first down. Had uh, Croteau not fumbled and then the first keeper out of that wishbone uh, he was hit hard and Kevin Stevenson came up with the ball and Bangor goes on offense now uh, this time the handoff goes to Delano straight ahead into the line Bangor uh, I noticed Joe I want to mention something while you're looking here Bangor oftentimes in the first period uh, play very basic they don't open up a lot of times in the second half that's true Let's quickly go over the offense of Bangor High School. Trent Robinson, Thompson, Skip Hall, Switzer, Osborne, Spearing, and Hall in the line. Quarterback is Doug Whitney, Lance Delano, Stu Giroux, and Mike Nosworthy in the backfield. Delano picked up a yard on the play. Bangor switches into the tee. Again, the handoff. This time to Giroux. Giroux tries to sweep the right side, and again, the bitter for defense very alertly stopped him, and uh, they looked like they were keying on Giroux on that play. Tom LaFountain that time put the... Uh, Drip around him to knock him down. The benefit defense goes like this Steve uh, Martin, Mike Small, Graham Small, Brian Curret, Chuck Beauvoir, Tom LaFountain, Claude LeClaire, Kevin Hall, Dennis Gedboy, and Paul LaFlamme, and Steve Montenbeau. So a lot of the benefit kids go both ways for this uh, benefit uh, Tiger team. Back or uh, splits Norsworthy out to the right. This time, Whitney's going to pass. He throws deep. He's got a man open at the pass. A good defensive play by number 15 for Bitterford. Getting back to uh, knock that ball down that was intended for Trent Robinson. Pat LaFemme was the uh, person who knocked it down. And going deep that time was Mike Nosworthy. So Bangor trying to bust out quickly with a long bomb did not connect. And now they get into fourth down situation. And back will be Philippon. Bangor did not gain an inch. They, uh, in fact, they may have lost a half a yard. Philippon, the snap a little high, but Philippon will get the kick with the win. It's a beauty, a high spiral. 
uh, sending the man way back to the 15-yard line. He's having trouble. He finally falls on the ball back about the uh, inside the 15-yard line. So a good kick by Philippon, and kicking might be a key to this ball game. Steve uh, Montembeau was the attended person in trying to get it, and he kind of uh, messed around and then finally jumped on it as a lot of red shirts got in. So Benefit will be working on their second series of uh, the game as we're coming up to the seven minute mark now of the first quarter there is no score here in colby college in waterville maine the ball is marked on a 13 yard line so bitterford uh once again working against the wind come out into their uh, wishbone offense with both ends in tight and they shift out of that there was movement in the line but apparently no flag down on the play and the handoff goes to leclerc and leclerc gets nowhere as the bangor's uh, left side of the line stiffened and that good punt by Philippon might have uh, charged Bangor up here in the first period, Joe. And Mike Jewett was the main man for the Bangor High School Rams, number 81, that put the, the hit on. But you can see, well, maybe the patent is too early to see, but it looks like that uh, just about on every uh, carry is LeClaire. And he's their big fullback. With Kalinas and Monomo doing the blocking. Again, they're into their wishbone offense. This time, the pitch out uh, handoff this time, and a keeper on it, Coteau. Looked like Coteau tried to bang into the center of the line. He may have picked up a couple of yards. Yes, he did. He moved it out to about the uh, 17, so a pick up a five on the play. Lance Delano was in on the tackle of Bangor High School. As we're down now to the six-minute mark of the first quarter, still no score, and the punt uh, was an excellent punt by Danny Philippon. Has put Bitterford down where they are at this moment. Well, they've got a third and six the scoreboard. We'll go along with the scoreboard. A big play. They can the Banger can force a punt into the wind and deep in their own territory. Pitch out this time goes to uh, Gadboy. Gadboy tries to sweep around the right side and again, uh, good defensive work by number 31 for Bangor over in that sideline. Yeah, this was uh, 32 was Ralph Kamek. Kamek quickly in. And uh, there was some good blocking for Bitterford out front. So Bangor has uh, recovered a fumble, has been not, not able to do anything, and now has stopped the run in a fourth down situation. Brian Matho will kick. It gets a high boot up against the wind, but the wind holds it up and it lands. But it takes a good Bitterford bounce up along the sideline. Goes into Bangor territory and is fought it down about the 43-yard line. So uh, the, even though the punt didn't travel too far in the air, it got a good bounce, Joe. It certainly did, and uh, looking at the number 35 who was back there for the uh, Bangor High School Rams and just let it go was uh, Balma, B-A-L-M-E-R. So Bangor now will be working from their own 43, would you call it? 43, Whitney at quarterback now. Bangor with the win behind him. This time the handoff goes to Delano. Delano gets good yardage as he kind of crawled his way through the center of the line. Got up over the 45 to about the 47, so he picked up about five on the play. That's the first offensive move that Bangor has made any sizable gain, Joe. And Steve Montembeau made the tackle for the Biddeford Tigers. So both teams feeling each other out. And uh, Bangor is a very slow starter as they were in the Brewer game. Now hoping to put something on the board here or get something going for the Bangor Rams. Giroux, the deep man in the offensive line. The ball goes to Giroux. Giroux looks for running room off the right side, and the little guy plunges for about three. Coach Price is uh, rotating uh, his uh, split ends. Robinson, Fahey, and Daryl Dawson sending in plays. And Robinson's coming back in, and Dawson's coming out. And Steve Martin made the tackle that time for the Biddeford Tigers. As Giroux, they have not used him really that much. Giroux usually is used on the big third down plays that they need explosive yardage, so we'll keep an eye on him. They need it now. It's third and four for the Rams, just short of the 50-yard line. The pitch out goes to Giroux. Giroux looks for running room, but Biddeford, what a defensive surge. Biddeford had five men keying on Giroux that time, and he lost about two yards on the play. Big defensive play by Biddeford. And the key man in there was Claude LeClaire, who made the tackle. He's a big fullback for Biddeford. So with a third down situation now, uh, they did not uh, get up uh, for their first down, so they'll be forced to punt again. And back to punt will be Dally Philippon and the single man back there for the... Steve Montembeau. Montembeau. And the biggest block! And Biddeford was chasing it down. It's blocked, and Biddeford will take over at about the 20-yard line. A big play by Biddeford. Well, there you go. They talk about the big play that turns things around. We're trying to get the man's number. It's number 63 who jumped on the ball. That's Kevin Hall for the Biddeford team. So there's the first big break of the ball game as Bangor wants to call a timeout, Dewey. Coming to the sidelines is 31. Daryl Dawson wants to talk this over. 
So when it appeared that Bangor was going to kick themselves out of trouble, uh, a blocked uh, punt, it rolled back. It's on the 19-yard line of Bangor now. And a first down situation coming up from the Biddeford Tigers as there are three minutes and 15 seconds left here in the first quarter. Did you get the guy that made the, the block? Okay. We'll pick that up on the film as you take a chance to look at it tonight and tomorrow. But uh, whoever got in did an excellent job, and then you saw all kinds of white shirts and orange helmets. They piled on the ball, and the big recovery was by Kevin Hall, who is a senior for this bit of a team. They'll be operating from the Bangor 19-yard line. And we look to see LeClaire do some heavy work down in there. He's uh, lined up directly behind the uh, quarterback. Coteau. Coteau barking out signals. Man in motion. Coteau hands off to LeClaire. LeClaire gets a couple. And in on the tackle that time, Dewey was 67, Mark Thompson. So Thompson nails him right there. And Benefit, with their quickness, with their crisp hits, have, as the coach says, we make the big plays, and they certainly have now, as they have made a couple of yards here, getting closer to the 15 yard line. Again, they come out in their wishbone offense. Now they have back split out with only uh, Her uh, LeClaire, like handoff. No, this time the pitch out comes off to the Galenis. Galenis breaks to the left. Galenis gets down to the. Uh, Steve Montembeau, I'm sorry, but Montembeau, the right halfback. And coming up was Daryl Dawson again to make the tackle. You'll hear his name a lot uh, today. But that was an excellent play. A good fake on the belly series as LeClaire started in the line. And then the pitch outside, it went to number 24, their fine halfback, Steve Montembeau. And Montembeau picked up some good yardage. Third and two, Joe, and again, uh, they're close enough for a field goal if they don't make the uh, two yards, but the way this offense explodes, particularly uh, that great running back, LeClaire. The handoff goes to LeClaire, and the Bangor line stops him uh, very, very close to a first down, and this measurement's going to be very, very important, Joe. Delano was the man in to make the first hit, as they'll measure again, and we're coming... Uh, we're under two minutes now, about a minute and uh, 50 so seconds left here in the first quarter. As Courteau, the quarterback, mixing his plays up very well. He's got it, Joe. They've got a first down. Coming from the far side lines down. This is, uh, we might mention, excellent facilities that we have here. Uh, thanks to Dick McGee, the athletic director for Colby College. We also would like to say a very special thank you to the State Principal Association President Horace McGowan also for letting MPBN do this ball game. So we have got a cocker, we've got a perfect day, we've got a lot of people here, all of Biddeford is here, they must be across the way and probably half of Bangor. First and goal to go on the nine yard line and let's see how the Bangor defense, uh, how they can, what they can hold Biddeford down here this deep. Early score is important in a championship game like this. Great offensive team. Handoff this time goes to, uh, to LeClaire. LeClaire is stopped at about the line of scrimmage. Stays on his feet, and uh, they still haven't blown the whistle. <laughs> they just couldn't bring him down. He looked like a, a behemoth bull. <laughs> Mark Thompson was the man to hit him, and he hung on, and finally they did blow the whistle. So now they're down on the nine-yard line, and uh, it's second down and goal to go. Very little pickup on the play. They gave him about a half a yard, but... Uh, Bangor line, is, I think Bangor line is a little bigger than Bitterford's line, uh, man for man, although Bitterford's got some pretty big tackles out there. Again, the wishbone offense for the Bitterford Tigers, undefeated. Now a flag is down, and somebody may have lined up offsides. They're pointing at Bitterford, and a five-yard penalty, and Joe, this could be a big one. Tom LaFountain was the man that was offside. We saw that in the Brewer game a couple of times. They just came up, lined up, and evidently lined up offside. So referee blew the whistle, and now they get a five-yarder. So this puts them back to the 14-yard line. And that's very important. Now Bitterford may have to throw, uh, Joe, uh, because with second and uh, 14, this is tough yardage down there. They split the uh, boy out deep to the uh, wide to the left. And again, on the keeper by Croteau, he pitches it out, and a ball is fumbled out of bounds. And that was a lateral to Andrew Galinas, and Galinas fumbled it, and there'll be a loss of a yard or so. Loss of a yard on that play, and again, the fake up the middle. It went to uh, the fake to LeClaire, then the Croteau starts out to the right, pitches out to Galinas, and Galinas fumbled the ball out of bounds as there were red shirts over there. So now it uh, looks like they're down to the 13-yard line, but they're in the third down situation. Keep in mind, 
before the game, uh, field goal kicker was pumping him out about uh, 35 to 40 yards through the upright. So on a fourth down situation, we'll have to see what happens. Third and goal to go, third and 12 right now. A hand uh, at all. Now this time uh, he will pass. Coteau looks for a man. He's got a man open in the end zone. He scores. Claude LeClaire. Who else? Claude LeClaire. And this came from the 13-yard line. So a pass, an excellent pass by Keith Coteau, who took his time, found his target, and LeClaire moved in the end zone and was unblemished right over the middle. So this is, uh, there is 20, what, 19 seconds left. At the 19 second knock, we'll call it, a 13 yard pass from McCrow to LeClaire, and they will line up for the extra point via the kick. And they're gonna, they're gonna fumble it, so they're gonna go for the two point play. The pass is caught in the end zone for a two point conversion. Well, there was a mix up that cost Bangor dearly and helped the Bitterford Tigers, and they're very opportuni opportunistic. Well, they take advantage of their opportunities, let's say. Okay, that was Tom LaFountain who dug it out of the crowd for a two-pointer. So at the 19-second mark, a 13-yard pass goes from Croteau to LeClaire, and then they were going to try the extra point via the kick, the fumble, and a pass in the end zone went from Steve Montembeau to LaFountain, and they have eight points on the board, and we're almost at the end of the first quarter. Do we? A very alert play, Joe, by Monimo, who uh, holds the ball for Bitterford. Uh, he fumbled the snapback. They were definitely going to go for the, it looked like they were going to go for the one-point conversion. And uh, when he fumbled it, he very alertly picked it up and uh, spread it out to the right and found a man open, uh, LaFontaine, and Bitterford is leading eight to uh, nothing on a couple of big breaks. Well, the big break, of course, was a fumble recovery by Kevin Hall. They had a couple of penalties in between, but on a third down situation, they had an excellent pass by Kutu. All right, Barmer is deep for Bangor. The kickoff is a good one. A high twisting kick. Barmer brings it right there, straight up the middle. Barmer finds an opening. Barmer's still on his feet. Barmer fights his way out to the 45-yard line on a fine return by Barmer. And a saving tackle also by Dan Paquin. Paquin made the tackle. And an excellent run that time by Balmer. And with the clock moving, we will end the first quarter. Probably they will get the playoff doing. Well, I don't know. They've only got 10 seconds. Uh, they need it. They got the wind, so they may try to get it off. Yeah, I guess they, they are. They come up uh, five seconds. They do get the playoff. And it's going to be a pass. Whitney throws it out in the flat where Farmer has it bounce off his fingertips. Not Farmer. That was Northworthy. And apparently Northworthy is going to be the favorite target for Whitney this afternoon as the quarter ends. It appears uh, that he is going to be. Bangor has uh, tried the rollout pass uh, on twice. They have not connected. And it appears that Whitney is trying to get back in the ball game quickly. But uh, there's really no need. We've got three quarters to go. So we end the first quarter of play. And the score is Biddeford 8 and Bangor nothing. And I wish we had picked up the, uh, the person who blocked the, the punt by Philippon. But we did pick up the person who picked it up. And that was Kevin Hall. And then a 13-yard pass from Croteau to LeClaire. And then a missed play, a broken play, that ended up as a two-pointer. So that could be a very big two-pointer. Eight to nothing, the score, as we get ready for a second down play as the officials are moving now the, the ball on the other side of the 45. At the 45, uh, yeah, they'll be working about the 45-yard line going toward the goal to our left. So the wind blowing from our left to right as the Bangor band down below us uh, strikes up. And at halftime, we'll have both bands uh, for your enjoyment. And this uh, Biddeford crowd, I can remember seeing the 67 game, and they must have brought everybody, plus Sacco, Kittery, Portsmouth Naval Yard, everyone you can think of at the game. They are a colorful bunch, and they certainly have a fine football team. And I think their coach, uh, Mike Landry, has said it. They somehow make the big plays, and they did on that particular touchdown play, Dewey. Joe, I've only got one criticism of them. Those orange on white numbers are awful hard to see in that bright sunlight out there. Especially when they're going that fast, right? <laughs> they are quick, though. I Very quick team. 
that's uh, was their reputation and they also are very uh, take advantage of their opportunities it looked as though when Bangor uh, when they were had a had an offsides and uh, uh, went five yard penalty when they were inside the 10 that Bangor may have stopped them but uh, an excellent pass from Coteau to uh, Leclerc for the touchdown uh, benefits record 9 and 0. they have scored a lot of points 276 to be exact and the only uh, team that they did not score double figures on was thought of course Thornton is a cross city rival like Bangor would be with Cabrua but they have put a lot of points they had 36 against Deering 35 against Westbrook 30 against Bangor 45 against South Portland so this is a big machine. Bangor really didn't start uh, putting the scoring together till after the fourth game against Edward Little. Then they had 21 against Waterville, 45 against Coney, 28 against Westbrook, 20 against Brewer. In the playoff game, they had 26. So Bangor is up against a very fine football team uh, here this afternoon. They felt they were denied the championship bid a year ago. Now they're in it, and they're leading at this point by a score of eight to nothing. Joe, some people might wonder why we're having such a long timeout. This scoreboard is a 15-minute uh, clock. The uh, quarters are only 12 minutes, so they have to allow the clock to run three minutes between quarters. So, uh, which is uh, a little break for these high school players when playing both offense and defense. Bangor now with a second and ten. The ball just over their own 45-yard line. Again, a handoff goes to Giroux, and again, Giroux is, gets nowhere, and obviously, Bitterford has a really keying on Giroux. It appears the man is keying on is Claude Leclerc. This is about the third tackle Leclerc has made on Giroux. So, Bangor has ample backs. They have a lot of backs, and I assume uh, before this game is over, you're going to see a lot of running from Delano as well as uh, from Balma. Dawson and Robinson again alternating. Dawson bringing in the play this time. He's split wide to the right as Whitney fades to pass. And Whitney is hit in the zone backfield. Very alert play by number 35. That was Chris Beauvais. Beauvoir, if you will. And he got in there like he wasn't even being blocked out and moved quickly in. So now we come to a third down situation. Loss of yardage. And coming to the sidelines is Delano along with the a draw with this time and draw was saying something to coach Gabby Price and again to do the punting will be Danny Philippon kicking into the wind this time gets the kick away from his own 30 it's a wobbly kick landing on the around a 40 yard line bounces down to about the 37 where and Bitterford will have the ball with the wind at their back and down by a trip Switzer so it seems like every time uh, especially in the 67 game when Bitterfoot scored their first touchdown they were hitting like uh, cement trucks and you could see them quickly get in uh, and make some key tackles they're a fired up line they're very quick they're not that big but their quickness certainly is showing here in this first half this is a big series for Bangor they got to stop Bitterfoot now or not fall behind by 14 to 16 points again they come out in the wishbone this Bitterfoot the handoff goes to the big uh, fullback that was uh, number 40 for uh, Bitterford. Uh, Andy Galinas. And the tackle that time was made by Mark Thompson and helped out in there by number 22, Stu Giroux. Galinas is a big, uh, uh, a big, he's 5'8", 165. He actually looks bigger than that from this, uh, from this advantage point. They've got some uh, big, strong backs there. They're not tall, but they're very well built. Gadboy splits out to the left. Now he comes in a little tighter. They go into the wishbone. With Hand off this time goes to the uh, fullback, Leclerc. Leclerc had a fumble on the play, and Bangor has recovered. Well, that game was rather dramatic suddenness, uh, Joe. Uh, Number 75, that Pete Durant. And uh, I think the uh, what they were doing was waiting for the whistle to blow, and it didn't. And uh, Durant says, look what I've got. So Bangor picks up a big fumble here. And they have the ball at the 38-yard line of Bitterford. Well, Bitterford got a break in the same area where they blocked a punt. Now let's see if the Rams can come back. And this time it's a uh, straight tee. The handoff goes to the fullback, Delano, uh, Delano, and he pounds in for about three. That time the tackle was made by number 71, Mike Small. So a break here for Bangor High School and see if we can capitalize it as Durant picks up a uh, fumble at the Bitterfoot 38 yard line. Dawson brings the play in. The Rams seem to be fired up at this side. Uh, uh, Great high school football team is Bitterford. Bangor with the, the slot right 
All right, the pitch out this time goes to Giroux, and again, Giroux is keyed on and stopped for a loss back to about the uh, 40, uh, 41 yard line, 42, 41. Steve Martin was the man for the bit of Tigers who put the big hit on him. So Bangor's running game that's been highly touted uh, has really not gone that, that, that far. So it appears they have uh, a couple of bags of tricks. Uh, Whitney is a fine rollout quarterback and coming to the near side would be number 33. Uh, Mike Nosworthy. Nosworthy was his favorite target there on three occasions. Farmer has come in now, and they're going to split out Robinson wide on a passing situation, third and 17. But the, all right, uh, this time it's going to be Farmer looking to throw. Farmer throws the ball downfield. Nobody there but white jerseys, and it's picked off by Bitterford. Taking the ball back up is number 15, and a flag is down. Ball is picked off, and that time Barmer should not have thrown the ball. He desperately threw a left-handed pass, and it was picked off by number 15 of Bitterford. Pat LaFlamme was the man that intercepted it, and Balmer was almost on his back when he threw that. He was slipping at the time, and he threw it. It, uh, it was a flea flicker type play where the halfbacks handed off to each other. He came around on the near side, on the side nearest to us, and uh, evidently there must have been a clipping penalty on top of that, but uh, there was nothing but white shirts down there, do we are correct? And he picked that ball off very easily. Pat LaFlamme, who is a junior. Well, there's no tomorrow when you get to a state championship game and uh, Gabby Price is pulling out all stops and he probably wishes he had that play back. The, uh, it was a clipping penalty against the uh, Bitterford Tigers on the uh, interception return, so they'll have the ball at the uh, 20 four yard line that's their own 24 so it puts Bangor right back on defense and uh, that's just about what they've been doing all afternoon is this benefit ball club they are certainly opportunist well they're keying on Giroux they, they have a man with Giroux wherever he goes whether he has the ball or what it may be all right, Bitterford again in their wishbone with a uh, Gad Boy split out. There was movement in the line. The handoff comes to LeClaire. LeClaire comes up the middle for about three or four. Looking for a flag. There was movement before, but apparently no violation. Bangor jumping around on defense. Getting up from the bottom of the pack that time was Pete Durant. And also in there to help was Pat Dugan. But uh, watching the... Uh, the line again and we must give credit to this Biddeford line because they're blowing some holes out on that right side Dewey and for this Biddeford team in that line LaFountain, Fournier, Gagne, Gervais, Hickey, Small, Gadbois. All right the pitch out this time goes to number 25 Gadbois and Gadbois is stopped by the Bangor alert defense as he tried to go wide around the left and uh, Bangor is playing a pretty decent game defensively. And that quickly was Doug uh, Whitney who moved up from his corner position to make the tackle. And there was a kind of a, uh, a, a pitch out that looked like it was gonna lead him a little bit, but he caught it one-handed and, and kept on going, and that could have been a big play if Whitney hadn't made the tackle. 6.50 to go here in the first half, as Bitterford is leading by a score of eight to nothing on a two-point converted uh, touchdown. This time they split uh, Gadboy wide to the right. Also have two flanker backs. The handoff, straight handoff goes to LeClaire, and LeClaire goes nowhere. He was hit that time by Brian Boffman, a uh, check that 75, Pete Durant. And Pete Durant makes a good hit. So it looks like they'll have to go back and punt. It looks like LeClaire might have got shaken up a little bit on that uh, last tackle. All right, Giroux and Barmer are going deep. And a very quick uh, snap. The ball is booted. It's going to go Giroux on the left. Let's see how he does in open field now. He takes it, gives it off to Barmer, and Barmer is slammed down over there hard as Giroux tried to reverse the handoff to uh, Barmer, and Barmer was hit hard, and he's down. And Mike Gagne was the uh, person that tackled him, and he is, looks like Barmer is hurt. He was nailed. That was, uh, that was a, a big tackle for the Biddeford team who gets down quickly. There's a flag on the field, but Barmer is down as well, and he really got hit. The punt came to Giroux, on the far side, Giroux handed off to Bomber, and Bomber was immediately hit by uh, Mike Gagne, who is also one of the captains, a tri-captain with this bit of a team. He's a senior. He captains along with Claude LeClaire and Steve Montenbeau. So the specialty teams, and that's all we've heard of all week, is the bit of specialty teams, and here they are again. Well, they're they well scouted. Bangor's well scouted because everything Bangor's tried in the tricky uh, formations or uh, and a penalty against Bangor must have been clipping on the uh, punt return. 
And this puts the ball down about uh, close to the 15 yard line. Let's call it the 14 yard line, but uh, just an excellent uh, play at this time. And over in the side, over uh, approximately around the 20, six or seven yard line is Balmer and uh, he was really nailed. I hope it's nothing serious but uh, you're right Dewey and I agree a hundred percent is just everything that Bangor has tried Biddeford has has been there. Someone's been there and they are keying on Giroux. Uh, two passes or three passes they did throw out uh, from Whitney that went to Nosworthy did not connect. Obama's up and he's running over, shaking his head, but he's coming over to the sidelines, and he's a junior, along with Drew for this Bangor team. So Bangor cannot afford a fumble or any miscues down this close. And they're working against the wind. So they have it first and 10, down deep in their own territory. And they've got to pull out all stops now, because they can't afford to let Biddeford get too much farther ahead. Delano lined up behind Whitney. The handoff comes to Delano. Delano tries to get through the center of the line, and again, uh, gang tackling by Bitterford. Boy, they are muscly on defense. Very good on that left side. Graham Small, uh, the key tackle that time. Coming in now for Bangor is Jeff Fahey. And Fahey can fly. He's one of the faster players on this Bangor team. So with the second down situation, you may see him uh, in action now with a pass. No gain on the play. It was Giroux that carried on that play. And again, the handoff comes to Delano. Delano try, Delano tries to come off the left side and picks up uh, maybe a yard. Graham Small again with the tackle and a third down situation as we're getting closer to the halftime here coming up with about five minutes and 20, 25 seconds. So the play is going to be brought in for, by number 11, Trent Robinson, and coming to the side again will be Jeff Fahey. Third. Straight tee in the backfield, uh, maybe a passing situation. Whitney uh, is a pitch out this time, comes to Giroux. Giroux gets by one man, picks up maybe four or five, but far short of the first down. And again, they were king on Giroux. And number 63 gets up from the bottom of the pack, and that is Kevin Hall. So Kevin Hall makes the tackle, and going back will be 24 for the bit of a team, Steve Montenbeau. Montenbeau going back to receive the kick along with uh, number 25, Dennis Gedbois. Ball is on the 19 yard line, so Philippon will be hitting it about the 10. And. All right. He's kicking against the wind. He gets the boot away. It's a uh, end over end kick. Will land at the. Uh, gets a good bang or bounce. Landed at about the 39. Rolls to mid, near to midfield. It stops directly at midfield. So again, Bitterford with excellent field position uh, with four minutes and 10 seconds to go in the second quarter, leading eight to nothing. The wind at their back, and things are working for the Tigers right now, Joe. They, they look uh, very, very impressive in this first half. Steve Montembeau uh, was the nearest man to the ball. He just let it roll, so they'll be working right from the 50-yard line. And as we near the four-minute mark now, Bitterford leading by a score of eight to nothing here in the second quarter. And they want more. You never have enough in a championship game. The only setback now is uh, LeClaire. And fading to pass is Coteau. No, Coteau is going to keep on the option, and he picks up good yardage down to about the 40-yard line. Fumble. Down to the 39. Fumbles, and Bangor recovers. And that recovery was by Delano, and Coteau was running with the ball in his left hand, not on, pitched, uh, put under his arm, and he was nailed. And the ball came squirting out, and Bangor recovered. So Bangor's recovered some uh, couple of fumbles here, but they haven't been able to capitalize. Well, uh, only fumble recoveries, I think, has kept Bangor uh, close here in the first half. They've been more of a second-half ball club. All right, this time the handoff goes to Jerome. He tries to go wide, and three defenders, he slips two of them, picks up a couple of three yards. But there were three men out there with nobody in front of Giroux, and Giroux got a couple. Again, there was a shadow, Claude LeClaire, who put him out of bounds, along with 83, Steve Martin. So Giroux just has not been able to do anything. He has been uh, followed by Steve LeClaire, and LeClaire is doing an excellent job both offensively and defensively. Well, the scoreboard gives him a yard on the play. We'll go along with that. It'll be second and nine for the Bangor Rams. Again, they split the... Uh, Right half back, Northworthy wide. The handoff comes to Della Delano this time, and Delano leaps over the line for a couple of three, but 
Biddeford has not allowed Bangor's running game to get any yardage whatsoever, very little. Dennis Gedbois that time in with the tackle, coming to the near side, number 31, Daryl Dawson. Coming in with the play is uh, number 11, Trent Robinson for the Bangor Rams. Third and six, the ball on the 42. Bangor has to reach a 48 for a first down with uh, a little less than three minutes to go here in the first half. Trailing, and Whitney is going to pass. Whitney's got a man open in the flat. It is Robinson, a great defensive play by number 25, on and Moe. He may go all the way. One man is before him, he stops him. Oh. As Whitney made the tackle, what a defensive play by Dennis Gadboy. He it looked like Robinson was open. And he looked like he was going to go, and Whitney put on the big tackle. So the passing game of Bangor's has backfired as uh, Gadbois kind of played volleyball with the ball down the sideline, batting it around, and finally controlled it. And, and a game, not a game-saving tackle, but a touchdown-saving tackle was made by Whitney. So look where the Tigers are now. They are on the... Bangor's 20-yard line. This is very much like the Brewer game when ba uh, Brewer intercepted uh, late in the first half and scored. And then Bangor came back and got one in the first half. Let's see what uh, Bitterford can do now. All right, Coteau will pass for it. Coteau looks. He hits it on the flat. It's intercepted by Bangor. As moving up very nicely was Ralph Kamet. Number 32, Ralph Kamet uh, steps in in front of the intended receiver and intercepts a control pass. So Bangor's got the ball back. So events are changing, but the score hasn't changed. It's still eight to nothing. Joe, if we look back at this game, Bitterford's missed an awful lot of opportunities here in the first half. Uh, they really have a big lead. It seems like the score should be about 30 to nothing right now. All right, the Rams come out, and they'll be careful now with a little over two minutes to go in the first half. Uh, they have the ball in their own 20. It's going to go to Giroux, and Giroux is stopped in his own backfield. That time... Uh, uh, that was Bomber, I'm sorry. Bomber 70 game. Graham Small and 71 Mike Small uh, made the tackle. Bomber back in the game, so he was only shaken up on that play. Now coming in is Fahey for Bangor, and coming to the sideline again is Trent Robinson. It's uh, second and uh, 12, a loss of two on the play, and I think Gabby Price will be happy to go to the uh, dressing room only down by eight if he can do that. Bangor will gamble too much now. All right, it might have been moving in the backfield as Whitney looks for the, uh, the option and keeps the ball and has lost uh, a couple more yards as uh, Bitterford really breaking through the Bangor offensive line. Bitterford calls time. They want to stop the clock. They want another chance here in the first half, Joe. And Steve Martin came in to make that tackle, and they want timeout. And there's about uh, approximately one minute, and we'll call it 20, 22 seconds left here in the first quarter. As Bangor becomes opportunist, so does the benefit. And we go back and forth with pass interceptions, fumble recoveries, and uh, I think you hit the nail on the head. If Gabby Price can go in eight to nothing down at halftime or tied or whatever, I think he's going to be very, very pleased because this, this is an excellent football team, this benefit team. They are quick. They do everything well. They've got two-way people that uh, do everything well. They have a great coaching staff. They're undefeated. They're trying to knock off the Bangor Rams who won it a year ago over South Portland. But uh, we've got another half of football to go, so we shall see. Well, Bitterford's going to, the Bangor doesn't get a first down here, and they got 14 yards to go. Bitterford's going to get the ball back in good field position. As the handoff this time comes to the fullback for Bangor, uh, Delano, and he picks up a couple of yards, and those are tough yards. Again, that was Giroux was the uh, ball carrier. And on him that time was Graham Small. So Graham Small makes the tackle, fourth down situation. And uh, Bangor's been kicking a lot in this game. One big punt was blocked and recovered by a bit of a player, Kevin Hall, and later they scored. So we'll see if Mr. Philippon can put his foot into it now as we've got about a minute and 20 seconds to go. We had a minute and 20 seconds, I said before, right? Yeah, so I was wrong the first time. 15, uh, Joe. Uh, Bitterford has called timeout to stop the clock. That's two that they've used. So they'll have one timeout remaining, and they're going to have plenty of time uh, to get another score on the board with a minute and 15 seconds to go, depending upon the length, of course, of Philippon's punt against the wind. And this Bangor offensive line is, well, we'll get back to that, but Bangor's offensive line has had problems with the defense of this fine bit of a team. Montembeau drops back to the Bangor 45, and Philippin fumbles, he kicks it towards the sidelines, and he kicks it out of, it takes a Biddeford bounce, and it will not be a very long kick. Biddeford will have good field position, excellent field position, uh, somewhere around the 30-yard line. So it doesn't look like it was any more than a 10-yard uh, or 11-yard kick. 
Well, the ball was placed down at the 30-yard line, so Bitterford, with a minute and 10 seconds to go, have uh, in the first half, have an excellent opportunity to score again. And they want another timeout. So going to the sidelines uh, is the quarterback, Keith Cotro, to talk to his coach as uh, there's a minute and 10 seconds left here in the in the first uh, half. Opportunist, I guess, could be the proper word to call this bit of a team. They seem to make the big breaks, uh, recalling the 67 game. Bangor started out from their first offensive play when Steve Crane, uh, their fine halfback for Bangor, overthrew an intended receiver on the first play from scrimmage that looked like it was going to be a touchdown. Crane again uh, fumbled on the one yard line. Biddeford recovered. And uh, Bangor later had an opportunity to score when they threw a long pass to Snyder, who could not control the ball. So Biddeford, it seems to be in the in the tradition of the Biddeford teams, they seem to make their own breaks. And now they're talking over. They'd like to squeeze another one in before halftime. So Bango's defense has got to come alive again for about the young team's time. Delaney is the field goal kicker for uh, Biddeford. And they'll probably have to move it about another 20 yards to give him an opportunity. Again, they line up with only LeClaire. The handoff, uh, you know, the, the end around. Now it's an option play. The flea flicker, the long down. Field pass, maybe intercepting a banger. Had two defenders down there. A good defensive job in the end zone. That was Giroux that was in there to knock it away, and uh, also Stevenson. And that was intended for number 44 going down. Was Leclerc. Claude McClaire. So we had a little razzle dazzle to try to put two on the board, but it goes as an incompleted pass, and exactly one minute remains now in the first half of action. Well, uh, that they may have taken their all, their all allotted timeouts now, so they may try to go for a sideline pass to keep the uh, clock from moving on the play. I, I think they've got to move another 15 yards to give Galinas a chance, even though he has the wind behind him for a field goal. They split uh, Gadboy out wide left. And this time again on the wishbone, and again the flea flicker, the long downfield pass. The man is open, but the uh, ball is overthrown. And that time it was Stevenson again who went up against uh, number 86, Tom LaFountain, who was taller than Stevenson, but the ball was def uh, a little bit overthrown. So Benefit trying all stops now to get another one on the board, but uh, they only used up 10 seconds that time, so it was about 51 seconds left here in the first half. There's two, other, two more uh, Benefit players come in with a third down situation. So, Dewey, I wouldn't be a bit surprised. Why not? Throw again. Well, Galinas is the man that's doing the throwing on that uh, halfback option pass. As Again, they split their halfbacks out. Man in motion is um, Montembeau. They throw off to Montembeau through his hands. Now, that may be a lateral, and he better recover it. No, uh, <laughs> that was close to a lateral, Joe. Number 83, I thought so, too, for the uh, bit of a team. Steve Martin, he came back, and it looked like they may have had some fine blocking on that side. So we get the fourth down situation now as they've tried three straight passes, and they have not gone. Bangor's defense has uh, stood up fairly well under this uh, barrage of uh, benefit attacks in the air and on the ground. Well, on fourth down, they're going to go for it. They have nothing to lose right now. They have the ball in the Bangor 30-yard line with uh, the wind behind them. So it's a big play. Fourth and 10. Again, Croteau fades to pass. Croteau looks. He throws it into the flat. The man is open. He hits him at the, about the 10. He gets away from one man. He spins off to about the... Well, about the 10-yard line. A big play, and that definitely puts them in field goal range as they're down on the 10-yard line with 35 seconds to go. They're lining up very quickly. They do not have any... Well, the clock is stopped. It, it is to, so the, the uh, yardage markers can be moved, and the clock will start immediately as soon as they spot the yardage markers. 35 seconds to go. Cretel throws the ball out of bounds, and with 25 seconds to go... Uh, and the play, the play before that, it was an excellent uh, pass reception by uh, Dennis Gadbois, and he was tackled by a lineman coming back in the secondary. Following the play was Pete Durant. So if it hadn't been for Durant, he might have broken it. But it seems from looking up at this angle, that it seems like the Vitafit offense is wide open. They've got people all over the place, and they've got some... Uh, Groteau is an excellent passer, left-handed, and he's hitting the backs coming out. He's got a big end in LaFountain. So they're working now from the 10-yard line. When they put that man in motion, it spreads Bangor's defensive backs out somewhat. Now the man in motion goes again. This time, a whistle on the play, and it might have been a delay of game against uh, Bitterford. And if that's the case, five-yard penalty, put him back to the 15, and... Also, the angle on if he tries a field goal is not too good right at the moment. It's uh, the ball is spotted on the hash marks way over to the right. So if Galinas does try a field goal from that position, uh, it would be uh, an angle shot. 
So Bangor in hopes to stave off any more points that Benefit can put on to go in the locker room trailing only by eight. This time the halfback split outside the ends. And again, Coteau fades to pass. Coteau looks left. Coteau has a man open. It's over his finger, right off his fingertips. That was a catchable ball, Joe. Yeah, it was. It was an excellent pass, too. And getting up slowly was 25, Galinas. And uh, Bangal gets back. So another incompleted pass. It looks like they've thrown about 15 times in this, uh, in about a minute span. As two uh, players coming in from the sidelines to bring the play in will be uh, 83, their find in, uh, Steve Martin. And uh, 60. Six, it looked like Chris Hickey coming in with the play. Again, they split the left end out wide. And Control pitches it back this time to Gadboy. Gadboy looks running, finds running room, breaks into the end zone for a touchdown. That is a, a very, very big play right there with 20 seconds to go in the half. And a 10 yard sprint by number 25, Dennis Gadboy to put uh, Bitterford ahead by uh, 14, depending on what the outcome of the conversion. That was from the 10-yard line, and he had excellent blocking up front. We must give credit, too, to number 44, Claude LeClaire, who was uh, leading the blocking. So they'll try a, a kick, and if they mess it up, they'll throw for two. <laughs> okay, it, it will be Galinas trying to point after. Get, get Bitterford. The snap is good. The kick is up. The kick looked good. It is good. And Bitterford with a 15-point lead with 20 seconds to go here in the first half. And the Bangor Rams uh, have had their hands full trying to move the ball, Joe. They certainly have, and I think that one may have been the one that uh, will hurt Bangor in this. Well, there's a penalty on the uh, on the point after, and apparently it was against Bitterford holding, so the ball will be moved back to, uh, well, they haven't moved it back, and they're discussing it with the Bangor Rams. Rams have the option, obviously, uh, with the point after good, uh, they're going to make him go again. So this time the kick is going to be uh, 15 yards longer. The ball is going to be brought all the way out to the 23-yard line, and that put that's a pretty good distance even with the wind behind him, because this time uh, Galinas will have to kick it from about the 30. They may try. They may try to go 22 yards on some sort of a a pass play, get the two-point conversion. And they are. They figure they're out of Galinas' range for the conversion, so uh, they're going to try for the 22-yard 22, 22 conversion. Moving in the line again. No flag is down. Yes, a flag is down. A pass is into the end zone, overthrown. A flag is down. Now, Bangor may have been offsides on that uh, attempt. Number 40, Andy Galinas was the intended receiver overthrown, so we'll have to see what this penalty is going to be. No, it's going to be against Bitterford. They're talking to the Bangor man, so obviously they will refuse it. That was the longest uh, two-point conversion, 22 yards. <laughs> well, they're still discussing it. I wouldn't think there'd be any question as to whether Bangor would or would not accept the penalty because the conversion was not good. There's still uh, 25 seconds remaining here in the first half. And evidently, five <laughs> yards is going to be assessed again. Illegal motion on... Uh, Offsides against, uh, again, uh, Bitterford lined off uh, offsides. And this time, the conversion will uh, they'll go to the 27-yard line. So, as you say, Joe, this is an awful long two-point conversion. They get this one, they've really earned it. This last uh, minute of play in this uh, half, uh, which has been a very important minute for, minute for Bitterford, has taken a long time. All right, Bitterford again puts their halfbacks outside the ends. As uh, Coteau will pass, Coteau looks down the field. He finds a man in the middle and throws it short, and the conversion fails. So uh, that 27-yard, uh, 22-minute conversion didn't work. A 22-yarder uh, and a 27-yarder both overthrown. So it's 14 to nothing here in the second quarter. A big touchdown by Dennis Gedbois in the second uh, quarter of action. So Gabby Price on the sideline wondering uh, what he's going to have to do to get into this game. And this is a similar situation as it was in the Brewer game. But this benefit ball club has been, uh, this seems like this first half has lasted about six hours already. There's been so many plays by benefit. A lot of turnovers, too. Bangor have Barmer and Kamek deep uh, for this kickoff. 
And they're, they're not very deep. Uh, they, uh, apparently, they don't feel Biddeford will kick the ball too deep. They might even try an onside kick. We'll see what happens with only uh, 20 seconds to go. But they kick it straight away. It's going to go to Barmer. Barmer at the 20. Barmer to the 30. Barmer breaks outside at the 35 and is knocked off his feet at about the 34-yard oh, line. We'll call it the 35. So Bangor will have 15 seconds to try to get something on the board. And number 30, Brian Mateau, was in on the tackle along with Steve Martin. And you've heard those names several times in this first half on the defense. So we got some good two-way people on this bit of a team. Well, let's see how Gabby Price plays it, whether he goes for a big score here with 15 seconds. There's only This will be the last play. The clock is moving, and he hands it off this time to uh, Delano. And Delano cracks off the right side of his line for about six. One of their best offensive plays, and it was just a sort of a <laughs> repetitious thing. So as we end the first half of action, the score is 14 to nothing. And we'll take a look uh, at the first half of how the scoring went on a fumble recovery in the first quarter by Kevin Hall of the Biddeford Tigers. Uh, plays later from the 13-yard line, Porto hit LeClaire for a touchdown. And then on a broken play that was intended to be a single pointer via the kick, a throw went from uh, Montenbeau to Tom LaFountain, and the Biddeford team led by a score of 8 to nothing. And the second quarter, Moved back and forth, nothing happened uh, that, that much, but with about uh, 30 seconds left from the 10-yard line, Dennis Gadbois took it in on a run and led 14 to nothing. Then two penalties put Biddeford uh, back to try a two-point conversion. They overthrew twice in the 22-yard line, the 27, and it's, it was 14 to nothing. Well, that's the end of the first half, and the score is Biddeford 14, Bangor nothing. And we'll be right back in just a moment.
Ladies and gentlemen, directed by Mr. Frank Z. Walker with field conductors, Candy Cluby and Sonia Lauer, Bangor High School proudly presents the 1980 Marching Rams. The Marching Rams, thank you for your attention and hope you have enjoyed our halftime presentation.
line it up and go into it. Now all of a sudden it's turning cold. Now we're ready for the second half kickoff here in Colby, at Colby College in Waterville, Maine. The Bangor Rams find themselves down 14 to nothing, but they will be receiving in this uh, second half to start the second half. And we had an exciting first half. A lot of fumbles, a lot of passes, a lot of interceptions. And Bangor had went into the dressing room trailing 14 to nothing. And they're going to have to get out in the third period and stop this benefit machine and try to get one on the board to get back in it. Doing? Kamek and Bomber are deep for Bangor. Cowan is one of the upbacks, along with Dawson. As Bitterford again will have the wind in the third quarter, and the wind really is a factor. The uh, flag well, by the field house is almost out straight, directly at the back of Bitterford. And here's the kickoff to start the second half, and it is a taken by one of the upbacks, Dawson. Dawson gets to the 29 yard line where very alertly Bitterford comes down, and boy, is that special team of Bitterford quick. Mark Dillier. Quickly down there, number 21, to take the underpinnings away from the ball ball player. And Bangor now in their first series of the second uh, half. Uh, see what they had taught to them at halftime. The ball about a yard short of the 30-yard line. As again, Bangor splits uh, Norsworthy out wide. Handoff goes to Giroux. Giroux tries the middle and gets maybe a yard, a yard and a half. As Bitterford again, very stout. Very stout and in on the tackle. Once again, the name of Mike Small. Small making the initial tackle, bringing down the ball carry Giroux. Coming in with a play is Fahey going to the sideline for Bangor is Robinson. Second and nine, a pickup of a yard. And Bangor trying to get, desperately trying to get something going. All right, the only man behind the uh, is Delano. The handoff goes again to Giroux. Giroux tries the center of the line, picks up a couple or three, and Giroux, the workhorse, who was really Defended well in the first half. And Brian, uh, Brian Corret, C U R I T, makes the tackle. And coming in is Balmer, and coming to the sideline is Fahey. So the benefit line is still there. They're the Rock of Gibraltar right now as they are hitting that Bangor offense on every play. Passing situation, third and eight on the uh, Bangor 32 yard line. And equipment problem as the officials uh, blow the whistle. Giroux has been completely stymied in this uh, first half of action. They have not been able to shake anybody. Delano got about the big, biggest gain. I'd say five or six yards as it was. So Bangor will have to do something else. Their running game certainly is stalled to start the second half. Barmer split wide to the right in the slot. Again, uh, this time the Whitney on the keeper play is going to be dragged down for a loss at the 25 yard line. And this is by Steve Martin again, who was not fooled. Whitney rolled out to the right side after a fake handoff, but Martin quickly saw this and brought him down for a loss. And now Danny Philippin will have to kick into the wind as it's uh, third and 15. The ball has spotted at the 25 yard line and Philippin will be kicking from about his own 15. And again into the wind. The snap is good. The boot is away. It's carrying to the near sideline. It's a pretty good kick against that wind. It hangs high. A fair catch is called for at midfield. And again Bitterford with good operating position. Right on the 50 yard line and that was 23 uh, 25 Chuck at Dennis Gedbois who takes the ball exactly on the 50 yard line. So the Bitterford offense We'll strike it up once again as Quarteau comes on as their quarterback. Well, the Rams need a mistake by Biddeford, and Biddeford, of course, is a pretty error-free team, although they have turned the ball over a couple of times. They come out again with the wishbone. The pro barks out the signals. Quarteau hands it off this time to the uh, uh, Mon Monabu, and he keeps stays on his feet for five. He uh, showed a lot of drive. He took some people with him and finally brought down by 19 Doug Whitney as uh, they go from the 50 down about the 46 but a four yard gain 14 to nothing the score here Biddeford leading over Bangor in this class double A final. Bangor cannot uh, key on LeClaire as much as perhaps uh, Biddeford has on Giroux because uh, both Galinas and Monabu and this time it goes to LeClaire. LeClaire is stopped after a pickup of about two. And that time, 67 quickly in to stop him was Mark Thompson. 
So Thompson gets a piece of the ball, carry on Leclerc as they, at the end of the second quarter, just fill the air with passes, now are staying pretty much on the ground. Third and four. See how the Bangor defense, which really hasn't played that bad a ball game, Joe. Well, he, the line has done very well, and uh, coming up in the secondary, Whitney has been a standout. Gadboy is split wide to the left. Third and four. The handoff goes this time to Galenis, the second man through, and Galenis, a big gainer, down to the 30-yard line. And it looks like Giroux brought him down along with uh, Stevenson, and Giroux may be hurt. Uh, now he's getting up now and walking back to the huddle, but uh, that time, an excellent hole was set up for Galenis, and he went right up the middle for a first down. Well, Giroux uh, is okay. He's Now he's going to be replaced. Uh, Cowan, no, not Cowan, number 15 came in. Cowan, two men came in, but uh, 15 stayed in. As a first down for Bitterford at the Bangor 30. Uh, as Coteau fumbled the handoff and a whistle, uh, Coteau's knees uh, hit the ground back for about a two-yard loss. Coteau uh, had trouble handling a snap back. 15 in for Bangor on defense was Warren Hall. So the sideline goes Giroux, who evidently was hurt on the preceding play. And Hall stays in. It's getting a lot colder here, Joe, and I think any uh, any injury now will be uh, highlighted. It'll those bumps and bruises can really pain in this cold weather. This time they uh, split Gadboy right to the right. We might have a passing situation here. Coteau barks out signals. Coteau is going to pass. Coteau just out to the left. He looks downfield. Now he's going to run as the Bangor drops off, and he is driven out of bounds over near the 25. And Kamek was the one to knock him out as he found his receivers covered and so he decided to run and gets out of bounds. That's a tough defense to cover. Uh, they, have, they they will throw the ball, particularly in the flat, so when control rolls out, the Bangor cornerbacks have to drop off quite a bit. That time, uh, had a chance to pick up seven yards. Third and uh, four, they're gonna call it third and four. Another big play for uh, Biddeford as they're Trying to get that third touchdown of the afternoon, and that's all that's been scored is two by Biddeford. This time, Coteau on a keeper. He pitches the ball out wide to Galenis, but Galenis is stopped by a, on a good defensive play by number 31. Daryl Dawson. Dawson hung on and knocked him to the ground. Again, some good blocking by this Biddeford team. Andy Galenis was the ball carrier, but uh, a last minute desperation by Dawson, who hung on for dear life, puts the ball now down to the 25 at the 25 yard line. Pitiford's got a hurry. Uh, they have a third, a fourth and four. They're gonna go for it. And that clock has been moving. They haven't got very much time to put this ball in play. Big play, fourth and four for Pitiford on their Bangor 25. And again, Coteau is gonna throw for it he, on the option. He's going wide. He may be able to pick it up. He's being defended against pretty well and he is not gonna make it. Bangor, I believe, is held over at about the 21 yard line depends upon where they spot the ball it's going to be awfully close to a first down doug whitney was the tackler that knocked him out of bounds and they'll probably have a measurement on this 14 to nothing the score benefit leading in this championship game and bangor has held it looked like he might have been just an inch and he was just inches short joe well again i think it was a heads up play by the Curto. he did not throw no one was there to uh, rather to, to have the interception, so they have Bangor in their own deep in their own territory, about in the 22-yard line. Well, that was an important, probably the most important series of the ball game for Bangor. They had to stop Bitterford. They could not fall behind by three touchdowns. Uh, two uh, is going to be tough against this Bitterford team, which is just a great high school football team. Again, the handoff, a little hole, a little running room that time for Giroux as the hole opened, and uh, Giroux made what use he could of it as he skipped through for about. Uh, Six and 73 made the tackle. That was Guy Crapo. Delano, Delano on the play. We have a tendency to uh, Bangor uses Jarreau so much that if we can't identify the ball carrier, we give it to Jarreau. But that was Delano, and it is a third and four, a six-yard gainer for the Bangor Rams. This time the ball goes again to uh, Del Delano, and he picks up a couple more as. Uh, with King on Jarreau, Bangor apparently have decided to go to Delano to. Uh, Take the pressure off. Graham Small is the uh, is the individual who made that last tackle. And going to the sideline for Biddeford now is 86 Tom LaFountain. Third and two, and Bangor has a chance to pick. And a quarterback sneak. Uh, Whitney 
gained the ground, plenty of ground. It, it was a very quick play as the only man that moved was the center of Bangor and Whitney. And 51 was Mark Spearing, and 62 was Todd Gagan. Or, or if it was, well, Todd gets his name mentioned anyway, but 51 uh, was the man uh, providing the blocking, Mark Spearing, as Bangor gets a first down. 5.35 to go here in the third quarter. Bitterford leading 14 to nothing. The Rams get one of their rare first downs. They have the ball on their own 33. Whitney calling out signals. Whitney pitches it off to Giroux. Giroux looks to try the right side. And again, great defense by Bitterford. 35, Chris Bourvere comes up with a very, very big uh, tackle. And coming to the sideline for Bangor is 31, Daryl Dawson. And going in with the play is number 11, Trent Robinson. Boy, that defensive line of Biddeford is very, very alert. They, they swarm towards the ball. Second and eight for the Rams. Now, once again, equipment problem for the Rams. And we're ready to go. He splits Northworthy wide to the right. The pitch out goes to Giroux. He's going to throw. Giroux has got a man open. Number 11 is open, and he comes down with the ball. A great reception by Trent Robinson. What a play. He was well defended, but he kept his body between the defender and the ball. Went up high for it, came down, and the Ram fans come alive. It looked at first like 25 uh, uh, Gadboy might have another interception, but Trent Robinson hung on for dear life, so this is the biggest uh, spurt that Bengals had in this ballgame. They have the ball on the 43-yard line of Biddeford with a first down. And man, it might have been motion on the Bangor. Play, uh, but it doesn't make any difference because Delano is thrown for a loss. And 70 Graham Small, along with Andy Galenas, was in on the tackle. So Bang, there's a penalty across the field. And we'll see it evidently going to go against uh, Biddeford or will it go against Bangor? Against Bangor. Evid evidently against Bangor. Uh, the right end, Warren uh, uh, Hall, I think, jumped before the snap. They may not take it. They may take the play because it was a loss of two on a play. Yes, so uh, you're right. They decline. And it'll be second down and 12 for Bangor, or second and 11, a loss of a yard on the play. But again, the Rams hoping to keep this drive alive. They need something to get back in this ball game. Man in motion is uh, Norsworthy as Whitney will pass. Whitney will now will run for it, and he's going to be thrown for another loss. Again, the Bitterford defense ecstatic about their defensive play as well they should be. Number 33 in on the tackle was Brian Corrette. And uh, I think that was a heads up play by Whitney. The receivers again were covered, so he decided to go for the sidelines. And Fahey coming in and Robinson coming out. So just as soon as Bangor gets something started, Bitterford's line and their backfield becomes aroused. Bangor's having little uh, success on any wide plays, any rollout passes or any of that type. Again, Whitney this time goes straight back. He throws it into the flat. Giroux is open. He catches the ball along the sideline, but he may be short of a first down. A fine play by Giroux. Giroux just put his body right up in front of the defender, 25, Gadbois, and uh, came down with that ball, battled in front of him. But every pass that Bangor completes, there's a bit of a player right inside their shirt, so they are earning what they're getting right now. And it puts the ball up on the 35-yard line. And we're coming down to about three minutes and a half in this third quarter. Still 14 to nothing, Biddeford leading. Bangor needs four yards to keep, or three yards to keep this drive alive. Well, let's uh, say a long two. Fourth down, a big, big play. And this time, it had a pitch back, the flea flicker, the pass, the man is intercepted as it was intended for Robinson, and it was intercepted down at the 20 yard line by, uh, Galea, by uh, number 25, Gadboy. He'd been better off if he'd batted the ball down because it was a fourth down. They'd have had possession back uh, at the line of scrimmage, but now they can take over on the 20 yard line. So, uh, of course, that's high school ball. If he'd batted it down, and been better off. They certainly would have been, and I think that the uh, it was a razzle-dazzle and a good pass that time, but uh, not high enough, and number 25, Gadboy, comes down with another interception. First and 10 on their own 20 for Pitterford. This time, the handoff goes to Galenis. Galenis tries the left side and picks up a couple. 
and uh, Biddeford is going more to the halfbacks, Galinas and Monobo, than they are uh, the player. Mac Thompson was the initial uh, tackler on that, and on the that play, there is an injury on the field. It looks like it's uh, LaFountain, number 86, Tom LaFountain. So when Bangal gets something started, Biddeford uh, comes up with another key interception or a fumble or whatever, and coming in the game is 83, which will undoubtedly replace LaFountain, will be Steve uh, Martin. And they're working, uh, it appears, on the ankle area, left ankle, as Bangor's defense has been put to the test all afternoon. They have had uh, their problems with this hard charging Biddeford team that comes at you with an array of uh, talent. Croteau is the first time we've seen him play is just an excellent quarterback. He does everything well. He runs well. He hands off well. And uh, the raves and notices that I've read of all week are certainly true. And you've got some tough people coming out of that backfield. LeClaire, they haven't gone to him as much in the second half as they've decided to go with uh, Montembleau and uh, with Galenis. And uh, the injury is still on the field. Hope it's nothing serious uh, to this youngster as he gets up and see if he gets up on his own uh, power. And evidently it's uh, an ankle injury, probably twisted ankle, but it, he is going to go off under his own power. But most of all, Biddeford still retains the ball. And they now are on their own 23, 24 yard line. So we've got a second down situation as we are under the three minute mark here in the third period and Biddeford leading by a score of 14 to nothing. What Coach Landry doesn't want is a turnover down in here. And they'll, be, they'll be guarding the ball very closely with a 14 to nothing lead. Banger jumping around on defense. The handoff this time goes to LeClaire. LeClaire breaks up for a first down. There's good power running, Joe. He certainly he took the line right apart, and then uh, Kevin uh, Stevenson was the man that made the initial uh, tackle to knock him down. But he's a bulldozer, very aggressive individual, and uh, trying to key on that wishbone is very difficult as Perteau mixes up his plays. Coming in with another play is 66, Chris Hickey. First and 10 for Bitterford on their own 32. Again, the wishbone offense with Gad Boys put out right wide to the right. The handoff this time goes to the left halfback, Monobo, and he picks up a good gainer up to across the 40 yard line. And Doug Whitney, number 19, was in on the tackle as they're just grinding out some uh, yards. They have the lead, they've got the clock going their way, they've got the wind blowing their way. It looks like. Uh, Three periods of uh, outstanding play by this Biddeford Tiger team. They lead 14 to nothing. Uh, we're getting short time remaining to play it here in the third quarter. This time, uh, LeClaire will pick up the first down. And getting up uh, from the bottom of the pile, number 76 for Bango is Brian Boffinger, who makes a tackle, and it's a first down. Bitterford's not doing anything spectacular, but they're certainly controlling the offensive line. And with those good running backs of Galinas, uh, Monimbo, and uh, particularly LeClaire, they're picking up four, five, six, seven yards of the crack and controlling the ball with a 14-point lead. Again, a first down play. This time, the second man through is Galinas. Galinas breaks off left side for about five. And the tackle by 66, Skip Hall. And we must give credit again for this fine Biddeford line as the uh, fountain went to the sideline because of the ankle injury. But in the middle, as a left tackle, Eric Fournier, Mike Gagne, the left guard, Gene Gervais, the center, Chris Hickey, the right guard, and Mike Small, the right tackle, along with Denny Gadboys. And they are opening up some good holes for these backs. All right, this time it goes to uh, the left right half back, Monomo, and Monomo, another good gainer, about uh, seven or eight. And they're not doing anything fancy. They want to control the ball and just handing it off uh, alternately the half back and the fullbacks, Joe. Daryl Dawson made the tackle, another first down as they're down in Bangor territory now on the 44 yard line. And the play comes in again for another 66, Chris Hickey as the Biddeford machine now grinding out big yardage. This will be the last play of the third quarter. Biddeford leading 14 to nothing. Firing a penalty or this time it goes to Monobo and Monobo big yardage down to the 30. 
and 18 made the stop. That was Kevin Stevenson, and uh, if it hadn't been for him, Monum Ball might have gone uh, all the way for a touchdown. So we, the clock has stopped. Now it starts again. So that will be the end of the third period with no score in that third period for Biddeford or Bangor. And we'll end up still again at 14 to nothing. The only thing good for Bangor, they'll have the wind in the fourth period, Joe. Well, 14 points is a lot of points to make up. A lot of points, especially the way Biddeford's playing. They seem to just get aroused if Bangor gets down close uh, within the uh, 30 or 40 yard line. Their defense has been exceptional today. They've been knocking bodies all over the place. So Bangor now goes right out with a huddle to try to get something going here. And Bangor did not come up with the big play in the third period to try to get one on the board. So they're going to have to work for two touchdowns. And it will be interesting if they do score a touchdown and to make it 14 to 6. Will they go with the extra point via the kick or will they try for two? They got to get the ball, though, Joe. <laughs> and that's been the hard part. The, the defenders are probably all black and blue right about now. A big crowd, and uh, we count them again. No one's left. As they watch here at uh, Waterville, Maine, at Colby College, two fine football teams going at it and all the notices that we've read of all week everything we've heard about Biddeford is correct right on the money they are a fine fine football team shadow of that uh, field house where we're located on the field house with the press box spreading over the field now I don't want you to factor that will be but uh, there's one lonesome individual standing up on top of that field box and he's outlined like the Statue of Liberty out around midfield the officials that, that could again. Be Bernie Rossetti up there, isn't it? Uh, our Bernie. See, see this? The, uh, oh, yes, yes. He's probably on TV, doesn't know it. Uh, the officials, let's run down them and give them credit again. Charlie Roberts, Oscar Couture, Pennell Wooded, Bruce Campbell, Tim Furrow. The chain crew, they probably never, never get credit, is uh, Joe Cosgrove, Arthur Clark, Robert Dumond. Louis Barnes, the timer is Jimmy Datsis, and the assistant timer is Amen Dutil. You have an assistant timer? What does that mean? He carries the uh, what, bag what, in. What's Jimmy Datsis do? Jimmy's a good old golfing friend of mine. Jimmy's a timer. Yeah. Jimmy, this, the Jimmy, assistant Jimmy's timer a good, is he's a good basketball more. official. Yes, sir. I can remember uh, when he was picked as going down to the Boston Garden as uh, an official there when they used to have the tournament with Massachusetts and Connecticut. But uh, they're taking a long time. I don't know what for what. Well, they take three minutes to, between quarters. Oh, that's right. That's to run the clock, to get it back, because it is 15-minute clock instead of a 12-minute clock. That wasn't too hard. I could have asked the assistant timer of that. <laughs> well, that's in case Jimmy goes to sleep. <laughs> <isn't it? laughs> so Bangor trailing 14 to nothing. And the way Biddeford has been playing, there's got to be some big plays for Bangor to tie or win this game. Fourth and final period of action, uh, possibly the last action of uh, high school football in the state this year. All right, the handoff this time goes again to the right left halfback. Uh, that was Galinas. Galinas picks up a couple, maybe three. And he was stopped that time by Stu Giroux for Bangor. And Biddeford on this drive have done the same thing. They'll send the, the left halfback Alinas off the right side. The left uh, right halfback uh, Godboy or Montembeau off the left side and up the middle with LeClaire. This time they come out of their wishbone offense. And a pitch back goes to Gadboy. Gadboy is a good runner. Gadboy is going to be stopping that good defensive play by Giroux. Giroux, open field, a good tackle as Gadboy heads the running room. And Giroux comes over with a big key tackle. And going to the sideline, 65 limping with John Lassad. So now we get into a third down situation. And Bangor's defense has got to hold. I would say, not confidently, but I would say if they scored again here, that that may have been the final nail that uh, Biddeford will put in Bangor's coffin. They'll, uh, they'll have to stop two plays because Biddeford probably will uh, try to advance at seven yards in the third and fourth down. It. All right, this time, Coteau is going to roll out the pass. Coteau looks down the field. Everybody's covered. Coteau may run. He's got running room. He's going to be down to the 20 and knocked out of bounds at about the 20-yard line, close to a first down. 
And 31 and 19 for Bangor. Doug Whitney 19, 31. Daryl Dawson were able to uh, knock down the Fleet Clouture, Clouture and uh, the cameraman was taken out quite nicely too. So First we down. We got to give credit for the cameraman getting knocked out. But first down, so every time you turn around and look uh, for a pass or whatever, they seem to be very uh, big on opportunity, and they have made a first down at the Bangor 20-yard line. Well, again, a deep drop by the Bangor quarter, uh, cornerbacks uh, allowed to to pick up the first down. Now, Bitterford definitely in scoring territory. The pitch back goes to uh, Gadboy. Gadboy goes around his right end. Gadboy goes down to the 10, down close to the 5. That was the play they scored on in the uh, second foot touchdown. And he has got some speed. 31 save the day for Bangor. That was Daryl Dawson. And that was an excellent uh, pickup from the 20 down to about the six or seven. And Bangor is asking for a timeout as Daryl Dawson comes over to the sideline. So Benefit uh, just doing an exceptional job. That play is a wide play by uh, Gad Boyce. And uh, he is very quick. He's probably the fastest back they have. And that time, uh, 31 was able to make the stop, Dawson. But that puts him on the seven yard line and a first down and goal to go. Seven to six, let's call it six. And uh, Gadboy is a gazelle-like runner. Tall, lopes along, and as you said, he's uh, probably one of the quickest runners on the uh, Bitterford Ball Club. Although they got some linemen are pretty quick. Berto went to the sideline to talk to his coach, Mike Landry, to find out what uh, what he wants him to do. So from the six-yard line with four cracks at it, Bangor's defense will have to skip in here to try to stop yet another touchdown by this bit of a team. But the only thing that could stop him now, Joe, I think uh, on this drive would be some sort of a turnover because they're moving the ball so well. First and six yards to go for the third touchdown for Benefit. This time the handoff goes to LeClaire. He's going to score. Easily. And Bitterford sensing that they have won the state championship as LeClaire and that uh, typical stand of ecstasy as he holds the ball high. And uh, it should be only fitting that their great back, LeClaire, would score probably the big touchdown of the ball game. They are going to go for the single point conversion. Now the last time they were down there they tried for a single point and, and Monbo made it a two point play. The kick is up it's going to be off to the right and you can see how strong that wind was there Joe. 24 was the uh, the receiver to put the ball down. He had problems with it. Monobo. Uh, yeah Monobo and then uh, the kick by Number 40, Galinas just went off to the right. So this is the identical score that Benefit beat Bangor in 1967, 20 to nothing. And it was a six yard run by LeClaire at the 10.35 mark. So Bangor has a big obstacle to, to shoot for now is to try to beat this Benefit ball club that really look unstoppable. Ten and a half minutes to go in a ball game. There's a lot of time. Bangor will have the wind at their back, but they need a big play. And so far, Bitterford has stopped them any, any, the only, I guess the only longest play they had maybe was a 10 or 15 yard pass play. So they did complete one, a good pass play for about 15 yards to uh, Robinson and then another eight yarder to Giroux, but that's been about it. Dropping deep for Bangor, Farmer and uh, Canick. And Bitterford kicking off now for the Fourth time in a ball game, and that's a good boot against the wind. Taken by Kamek. Kamek tries to cut back along the near sideline. It's up to about the 30-yard uh, line, 31-32. Or Banger, Banger's had good field position when they when they got the kickoffs, but they haven't been able to move the ball. And Ken Nado made the tackle for the bit of the Tigers. So Bangor up to their 32-yard line has a long way to go, and the clock will not be on their side. Well, Whitney coming out now after a conversation with Gabby Price, and we look to see Bangor put the ball in the air, probably try to hit Giroux on some sideline shots, uh, but of course they were keying on Giroux all the time, so 
This time it goes to uh, Delano up the middle. Delano picks up three or four up close to the 35. And uh, you know the tackle was 35. Chuck Beauvoir, and he's been uh, he's been dynamite in the middle there, stopping the ball carry. Bangor really has not had a breakaway, a good breakaway away run all afternoon. Well, they're trying to set up something now. Uh, Giroux jumped a little bit, but I guess they didn't call it on him. That time the handoff this time comes to Delano, and Delano picks up another three or four. Bangor certainly hasn't got enough time to uh, left in the ball game, trailing by 20 points to uh, get back in this ball game a three yard game. No three yard games today. They want something more. They they the play they had against Brewer the flea flicker there when Jarrell went deep uh, might be in line at this time to, to get him down the, near the territory at least scoring territory. All right the pitch out goes to Jarrell. He's got a little running room going wide. The roll is right away. Breaks up the midfield and go across him to uh, Bitterford territory. The first opportunity Jarrell's had to run. Uh, in the tackle on that time was Kevin Beria as he brought him down. So number 22 to the outside and some good yardage. This brings it down over the 50 yard line down to about the 47. Fahey comes to the sideline as Bangor hoping not to be shut out in the state class A final. I think Bitterford will be giving Bangor any short uh, yardage plays. Get them content to take four and five yards at a clip. All right, this time the pitch back goes to Giroux. Giroux looks for fights by one man. He had one man to beat and would had a good yardage uh, pick up, but again, great defense. Number 71 quickly in on the tackle was Mike Small. And also that time was number 83, Steve Martin, who has played an exceptional uh, game uh, at his left end position. It's a pickup of a yard, second and nine for the Rams as they're making one of their first marches. Good gainer by Giroux. This time, handoff, this time goes to Giroux. Giroux tries to break back through the middle, but not much there. And that again was uh, 70 and 71. Uh, Graham Small and Mike Small, we assume they're brothers or cousins or whatever, but they have been very tenacious. As Bangor shuffling some players in, 35. Well, Farmer, that's Farmer. That's right, that's right. Farmer and Norsworthy are both in there now, and Delano is out, or Delano. This time the pitchback will go to number 35, Farmer, and Farmer again, no gain. And coming in is 83, which is Steve Martin along with 35, Chuck Boivier, and he has been exceptional. Both these guys go both ways. They play defense exceptionally well. They play offense exceptionally well. It's a very, very well coached, disciplined team. They can hurt you in so many ways, and their defense is, is very, very good. And it, they will now be going back for the punt as Philippon gets ready to kick. Well, we thought Bangor might gamble, but it's a lot of time to go, and they hope better to turn it over. Good kick. Taking them back about it on the two yard line by Monavo, and he's flattened back about the one yard line. So, uh, Good decision by Gabby Price that time to kick the ball away with seven minutes to go. And good coverage that time too as Thompson got down. And it's on the one yard line. So only 99 yards to go. And the clock uh, just under the seven minute mark now. Six minutes and 55 seconds remaining in this game. The Bitterford Tigers were shut out in the third third period but came back quickly in the fourth period at the 10.35 mark on a Run by Claude Leclerc from the six yard line to up the score to 20 to nothing. Bangor trying to force a turnover down deep now. This time the handoff up the middle comes Leclerc. And Bitterford, I don't know what their record is over the season as far as uh, fumbles, but they've handled the ball pretty well this so far in this ballgame. And one again made the tackle, Daryl Dawson, as they had probably a couple of yards that time. And now timeout is being asked for on the field. As 76 coming to the sideline will be Brian Bofinger. Evidently is injured. And going in will be 32 for Bangor Ralph Kamek. And number 51 also came in uh, for the Bangor Rams on defense. So that's uh, Mark, Mark Spearing. Mark, Mark Spearing. Second and eight for Bitterford deep in their own territory. This time uh, straight up the middle as they continue those power plays off the right and the left side of their 
good offensive line. And making the tackle for Bangor with number 75, Peter Durant, as they have now moved away from the one yard line, some breathing room, and a third down situation. And according to the clock, third down and three. Well, if Bangor can stop them here, they get the ball back in good field position because uh, Bitterford would have to kick into the wind. But Bitterford's been awful good on these short yardage situations. And again, they prove it as they bursting through is LeClaire. Move the ball up over the 15, out close to the 18-yard line. And it's a first down for Bitterford. And Kevin Stevenson made the hit. 82 going in is uh, Jeff Bouvier for the Bangor Rams. 76 comes back in, Brian Bofinger. And coming out is number 60 and 51 for Bangor, spearing along with Pat Dugan. So Bitterford again controlling the clock. They lead 20 to nothing with five minutes and 20 seconds to go in the ball game. It looks like Bitterford is going to uh, be the state championship, taking it away from the Bangor Rams, who are the defending champions. This time the handoff goes to the fullback again, LeClaire, and LeClaire gets a couple of three. The hit was made by Mark Thompson of the Bangor Rams. So what started to be uh, an exciting first half has been somewhat of a dull second half as Bangor has not been able to do anything against this Biddeford team and Biddeford is just grounded out on the ground uh, protecting their lead and watching the clock roll. Well, they're a good solid ball club. They come out in the wishbone with a second and seven. And off again, breaking through is uh, the halfback that time of Biddeford as he cracks up close to the 25-yard uh, line, close to a, but there's a first down. Daryl Dawson made the hit along with Mark Thompson. And coming to the sidelines of Bangor is Skip Hall. He's played an outstanding game. And is all over now, but the shouting. Well, it would be a... Uh, Really a feather in the cap of this young Bangor team to score a, a score against Bitterford, but uh, Bitterford is so strong on in all departments. And off this time comes to uh, Monobo, and Monobo was stopped that time as the Bangor line. Brian Bofinger in on the tackle, stopping Bitterford. But however, the clock's still moving, and just a few seconds it'll be at the four minute mark as Bitterford getting players into this game. I think they're sensing victory, and Coach Landry is probably giving some uh, game experience to some of his younger ball players. It probably will be throughout the rest of the ball game. Second and eight for Bitterford, their own 25. And a handoff this time, and a big pile up down here. The ball might have broken loose. Banger thinks it's been a fumble on the play. The Banger man comes up with the ball, but uh, don't see any notice of the official. The initial hit by Bangor is Jeff uh, Bouvier. But uh, they just keep coming at you. The Bit of a team, uh, an excellent team. Coteau waiting now on this, waiting for the plays coming in as leaving the game is 83 for the uh, bit of a team, Steve Martin. And here we go again. All right, it's third and long for third and eight for the uh, bit of a Tigers. I don't think they'll throw the ball. And they don't. They hand it off, and Bangor has stopped them this time. So Bitterford will be forced to punt as LeClaire was stopped about after a pickup of about five. Daryl Dawson on the hit, again with Mark Thompson. So they'll be forced to punt, and going back will be Bomber along with Giroux. Bitterford gets the ball away quickly, very bad punt. In fact, that ball could bounce back and they could lose yardage. It bounces back and they, about a nine yard punt. So Bangor will have excellent field position, Joe. And 86 was over there to knock the ball down, Tom LaFountain. So Bangor has uh, excellent field position, and if they could do anything that they'd like to do right now would be to score and not be shut out in this ball game. But uh, it seems like when they do get down to scoring territory, that Bitterford uh, just arouses and comes at you like Tigers. Only 14 seniors on this Bangor squad. They're a young team, and I think a score right here now would make them feel much better, even though uh, the, all the Laurels have got to go to the Bitterford Tigers. They're a fine ball club. Whitney fades to pass. Whitney throws it down the middle. He's got a man open. Giroux, Giroux catches the ball down at the 15-yard line. And that time brought down by number 40, Andy Galinas. And that's uh, an excellent pass that gets Bangor down a little bit tighter. So now they are down on what? The 15-yard 15, 15 15 line. Yard line. Uh, very an excellent pass. 
Well, a quick score here, an onside kick, and who knows? Of course, uh, Bangor just hasn't generated too much offense. Again, Whitney fades the pass. Whitney throws out the flat behind Fahey. As Fahey was trying to slant in, uh, Whitney threw it right behind him. And that uh, they misread that play. Fahey was there, but the pass was behind him. And if that had it connected, it looked like it would have been uh, six points. Trent Robinson coming in with a play, and Fahey now comes to the sideline. I think they might come back to that same pass that Giroux down the middle. Giroux looks like there's an opening and kind of a shell. Uh, Bitterford probably playing some sort of his own defense. Second and ten. As Whitney rolls right, Whitney's got time. He throws it down the middle, and this time it was intended for Robinson, and there may have been pass interference. No, they say that the good legitimate hit, Robinson, the, Robinson was open, the ball a little bit behind him. Steve Montembeau broke the play up. And uh, now Bango finds himself in a third down situation, still 10 from the 15-yard line as Fahey comes back in with the play. And uh, we have about a minute and 58 seconds left in this game. Well, they split Fahey wide to the left with Giroux and Delano the setbacks. This time, the, as Whitney go, goes on a naked reverse, he's going to be thrown for a loss. Oh, boy, they haven't fooled Bitterford a bit. Bitterford had six defenders over there. Brian Curitt was the first man in, and Whitney tried a bootleg to the left, but was quickly picked up. So fourth down and a 10 situation. They'll go for it. Uh, as he, I think he, he brought it back a couple of yards. He probably lost on that play, back to about the 17. So we're down about a minute and a half left in this championship game. So Bengal hoping not to get shut out. Well, this is probably their last chance to score with the clock moving a minute 20 to go in a ball game, third and 12. And Bitterford obviously set up for a pass as Whitney does roll. Whitney throws it out into the flat to Giroux. Giroux's got one man to beat, and that man is not beat as they stop him. Number 40, a fine halfback, Galinas, makes a good play on Giroux. And Giroux, it was either Galinas would stop him or he'd score, and Galinas did the job. So Bitterford is held again, and as they run to the sidelines, their arms up. And we're number one. Who have a stat of that? We're number one. The old Brooklyn Dodgers? Uh, Probably uh, Adam. <laughs> number one what? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you this. Uh, it's a wonderful win for a community to have a state championship. And a beautiful, wonderful town of Bitterford is uh, richly deserving of this one. And they're going to just uh, run it out now uh, as uh, control, control didn't even hand off. He just fell on the ball. Clock moving now with uh, 40 seconds to go, but all the best of Bitterford. And uh, we've, you've seen it happen, Joe. State championships really bring a community together. I don't care what sport it's in. And uh, this is the same score that uh, was in the 67 game. Bitterford beat Bangor at Bowdoin College, 20 to nothing, and it appears they're going to win this game by the identical score at Waterville. So maybe one year we might see the game up the University of Maine. But Bangor with uh, 14 seniors, as, as you mentioned, Dewey, we'll have some key people back in another year. And you have to give a lot of credit to Gabby Price coming back with only three status and coming back into the finals. They give Giroux, uh, Giroux off the field a chance to uh, get uh, the accolades of the fans because he d richly deserves it. He's playing defense and offensive both. But now Bitterford with only 40 seconds, they stop the clock, and I don't think Bangor has any more timeouts. Movement in the line as Croteau just falls on the ball. And the clock continuing to run. Now the official stops the clock, so Bangor apparently had one more timeout, and they take it with 35 seconds to go. So the only scoring in the second half has been a six-yard run by LeClaire for Bitterford. And uh, this Bitterford ball club has shut Bangor out at every opportunity. What looked like it might be a big drive for him. Uh, the backs have been intercepted or the linemen have forced a fumble and Bitterford has been opportunist with 35 seconds or 40 seconds remaining in this game. They are the class double A champion in the state of Maine. Well, third and 12 and uh, I don't know whether Bitterford will try to get a first down or whether uh, Croteau will just fall on the ball. We do want to say, Joe, to all those fine people in Bitterford. There are a lot of names, uh, French names, uh, Franco-Americans down there, and if we have mispronounced some of them, we apologize. We tried to do our best. We tried to apply as best we could the French pronunciation to the names, but uh, you've got a great football team. Especially with two guys with a name of Small. That, that was easy for us. 
Well, there's no more time. There's no more timeouts left for Bangor. The clock is running with only 10 seconds to go, and Bitterford now uh, has it won, and they're holding their hands up. And Joe, a pleasure doing these two ball games, the Bangor Brewer game, and this one with you. But congratulations to Bitterford, and our condolences to the Bangor Rams. An excellent game. The Bitterford uh, team now out on the field, very, very happy. A lot of frustrations over last year's uh, loss to South Portland. Bangor going over now to shake hands with this uh, bit of a team. And let's quickly run down the scoring in the first quarter by a key fumble recovery on a blocked punt by Kevin Hall set up the first touchdown with 19 seconds left in the quarter. A 13-yard run, a pass, I should say, from uh, Croteau to LeClaire. And then a pass, a broken pass, from Montembeau to LaFountain made it 8 to nothing at the end of one quarter. In the second quarter, the Bangor Rams thought they would strike, uh, but did not. A couple of fumble recoveries and interception. Uh, got the ball back. LaFlamme intercepted for Biddeford. And then a 10-yard run with 20 seconds left by Dennis Gadbois. He went in. They missed the extra point. This is the long series of extra points. The kick, there was a penalty. That was no good. They got penalized five yards, tried to pass. Another penalty, that was no good. Then they tried a 20 seven yard two point conversion and that was no good. So at that point they led at halftime 14 to nothing. There was no score in the third period and the final score came with a 10-35 mark in which LeClaire blew in from the six yard line on a run. So he had two touchdowns and Gad Boy had the other one. And this is the final score I should say again. It's Benefit 20, bang on nothing. They are the class double-A champions. And this is Joe Gould with Dewey DeWitt saying good afternoon.